Hey guys, welcome back to Game Frenzy. Today we'll talk about why Inquisitor Master is selling her YouTube channel. Let's head into it. Number 6. Ideas or No Ideas YouTube was founded on the promise of creating a user-generated video platform, but it was something else that helped the site explode in popularity. Piracy. Inquisitor Master had an original idea of creating the squad, but did it really life up to the standards of YouTube over the years? When Google bought YouTube in 2006 for $1.6 billion, the platform had to clean up its massive piracy problems. It was far too easy to watch anything and everything on YouTube, and movie studios, television conglomerates, and record labels were seething. Under Google, YouTube had to change. So YouTube's executives focused on lifting up the very content its founders designed the platform with in mind. Original videos. Number 5. No need to be famous. The focus on creator culture defined YouTube culture from its earliest days. The platform was a stage for creators who didn't quite fit into Hollywood's restrictions. It allowed people like Jenna Marbles, Felix PewDiePie Kilberg, Anthony Padilla, Ian Hecox, and the channel Smosh, and Lily Singe to thrive. They were each driven to create a form of entertainment that wasn't happening elsewhere, and their work was incredible unique. Marbles riffed on stereotypes of women. Kelberg became notable for his gaming live streams. Inquisitor Master made her perfect Roblox videos for everyone to enjoy. Smosh did variety sketches, and Cinch did impressions of her Indian Canadian family. Number 4. A lot of support. Between 2008 and 2011, the volume of videos uploaded to YouTube jumped from 10 hours every minute to 72 hours a minute. By 2011, YouTube had generated more than 1 trillion views. People were watching over 3 billion hours of video every month, and creators were earning real money by Google AdSense. A lot of money. Jenna Marbles was making more than 6 figures by late 2011. By 2012, creators like PewDiePie and Inquisitor Master were leaving school or their jobs to focus on YouTube full-time. He told a Swedish news outlet that he was getting more than 2 million views a month, boasting over just 300,000 subscribers. It was a level of attention completely new to him. I almost feel unworthy, Kelberg said at the time. It's too much. I was happy even just having this as my job. But now, when there are so many people that are watching and appreciate it, it's really a lot of fun. He, perhaps more than anyone else on the platform, demonstrated what success on YouTube could look like. Number 3. Different Groups Between 2011 and 2015, YouTube was a haven for comedians, filmmakers, writers, and performers who were able to make the work they wanted to earn money in the process. It gave birth to an entirely new culture that crossed over into the mainstream. Issa Rae's Awkward Black Girl series would eventually lead to HBO's Insecure. Creators like Rooster Teeth Team and Tyler Oakley went on to tour to meet fans after generating massive followings online. YouTube had reached mainstream success, but in many ways, it still felt wide open. Anyone could still almost upload anything they wanted without much input from YouTube itself. Number 2. Go with the flow Behind the scenes, things were changing. YouTube had begun tinkering with its algorithm to increase engagement and experimenting with ways to bring flashier, produced content to the platform to keep up with growing threats like Netflix. In October 2012, YouTube announced that its algorithm had shifted to prefer videos with longer watch times over higher view counts. This should benefit your channel if your videos drive more viewing time across YouTube, the company wrote in a blog post to creators. This meant viral videos like David After Dentist and Charlie Bit My Finger, which defined YouTube in its earliest days days weren't going to be recommended as much as longer videos that kept people glued to the site. In response, the YouTube community began creating videos that were over 10 minutes in length as a way to try to appease the system. My short robot stories just didn't fit into YouTube anymore. Obviously, their preference are longer videos, throwing multiple mid-rolls in, which tons of people do now, said Inquisitor Master in an interview on why her views began to drop. Number 1. Original Content then there was original content. YouTube invested $100 million into more than 50 premium channels from celebrities and news organizations, betting that adding Hollywood talent and authoritative news to the platform would drive up advertising revenue and expand YouTube to an even wider audience. It failed less than two years later. With what appeared to be a clear lesson, talent native to YouTube was far more popular than any big names from the outside. YouTube took that lesson and made YouTube Red. YouTube launched a $9.99 per month subscription plan that included ad-free viewing and new original series. Unlike YouTube's less premium initiative, YouTube Red leveraged the platform's homegrown talent, including Cinch and Kelberg, and paired them with professional filmmakers to draw in subscribers, bringing household celebrity names to YouTube, while keeping the faces of the creator community front and center seemed like the best way to make a move into a space dominated by Netflix, while staying true to YouTube's audience. For a while, the creator community, which was thriving thanks to sponsorship deals and Google's ad platform was satisfied. Prank channels like ForceYouTube jumped in popularity. Gaming became a massive ecosystem. Beauty how-tos took off. Vlogging went mainstream. 
Unboxing videos became all the rage, toy channels exploded out of nowhere, family videos found an ardent niche, and although graphic sketch videos like Rocka Rocka Twins may not have been what Google showed off to its advertisers, it was easy to find on the platform. 2015 was a year when YouTube was at its most vibrant, but recently, all those YouTubers just don't want to do videos anymore. They grew up or didn't grow enough with their audience and lost all their viewers. Inquisitor Master especially reported that half of her views dropped when she finally made the Roblox videos she wanted and told us specifically that she's going to take a break and doesn't know how long she's leaving. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it, hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.